Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I uh, hope you've had a fantastic Friday and looking forward to a, to a fine weekend. Great to see so many folks here already tonight. I have not started a pipe yet, but will shortly. Let's see. Cogs and Sprockets, Everett Young, Burley Nut Bob, Corvette Jim, JMZ56, Scott Terry, Signal Man Tony from Rhode Island, and Mid Maze 82. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, quite a full house already. Paul the Piper, Texas Piper, Joe RDZ, I can't keep up. <laughs> Andrew Cirliato, Robert Miller, Picking and Piping, Armchair Piper, hey there, Ed. David Holm, good to see you, David. Shade Tree Piper, how you doing, Paul? Robert Miller, Pipes and Bees. Lots of lots of guys going by very quickly. Good to see all you folks. Thanks so much for, for tuning in tonight and for joining me uh, for what I hope is going to be a really, really interesting uh, evening. We're going to be talking with uh, Jeremy Reeves from Cornell and Deal, and I'm sure that that's going to be quite interesting. Uh, I know we got a lot of Cornell and Deal fans out in the audience, and uh, I'm sure Jeremy's an interesting guy, independent of all that. So I'm going to start off with my Matches Tribute Pipe, and I'm going to be smoking Haunted Bookshop. Obviously, it's going to be a Cornell and Deal theme tonight. Of course, with me, when isn't, uh, when isn't it? JC, hello, Taciturn Richard. Boca de Boynton, how you doing, Charlie? Sailor, hello, Sailor. Good to see you, my friend. Ron H., the Volunteer Piper, Desert Pine Piper. Hey, Jim. Shamrock Piper. Little Fat Morgan, how you doing, Todd? Glenn Dunnington, good to see you there, Glenn. Happy New Year to you, too. Steph and Skip Kane, how's it going, Steph? And I think I saw Skip in there earlier, so good to see you, Skip. Ochoita, how you doing, buddy? Kathy Ennis, hello, Kathy. Good to see you. Popo Piper, 4325. <laughs> Good to see you, Popo. And Boris the Piper, how you doing, Boris? Monty, 53. WKR Piper in Cincinnati. And Bona Piper, how you doing, Christian? Ah, uh, Christian, happy to hear that, buddy. Mr. Ikasemba, hello. My goodness, we got we got quite the crowd. Ah, uh, so that's good. That's very good. It's, uh, where's my lighter? The more the merrier, right? Now, you probably noticed, um, or hopefully you noticed during the, the intro there, I, I give a shout out to two, two guys, um, Big Joe Smoke Show and Shade Tree Piper, and I hope you'll go and check them out. I put links to their channels in the description. And... I also had the coming attraction for next week, which is going to be a, a solo virtual pipe club. So I hope just as many people turn up for that as are turning up tonight to uh, to see Jeremy. Wishful thinking on my part, I'm sure. <laughs> Tony513, hello Tony, Portsmouth Piper. Dave Tuttle, smoking cardboard, how you doing? Dude Rustica, hello Steve. My pleasure, Paul. Happy to do it. So I'm starting off with some haunted bookshop. We're going to get on to Jeremy. Uh, I like to give time for the, the room to kind of fill up and settle in. So we're going to call him about quarter after eight. And uh, we'll be talking to him then. Uh, haunted bookshop and the Matches Tribute Pipe. And then I've got my Bari Pipe out. Uh, for after that and I'm probably going to wind up having some of this uh, crooner which I'm getting towards the bottom of the jar another fine blend
Mark in Rhode Island. Monty 53 smoking some seasucker. Seersucker. Sorry, seasucker. <laughs> That's a completely different blend. XJ90X. How you doing, XJ? Always good to troll uh, <laughs> XJ. The one simplex one. How you doing, Tim? Yeah, Ron, I'm I'm quite uh, quite happy with the crowd. Kilted Piper Steve, how you doing there? Oh, good question, Steve. Uh, um, it was Flatwater Monty was going to do a Christmas montage, and I haven't seen it. Uh, haven't heard from him, so I don't I don't know what's going on there. That's right, David, my wife's favorite. <laughs> That's why I'm smoking it down here in the basement. <laughs> Mid Maze has got some Kamoi number no. four Navy Flake. That's that's some nice stuff. I've had that. I uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. Humdrum, hello. Good to see you, my friend. Philadelphia Piper. Oh, yes, I, I have many of those maintenance uh, before smoking nights. Strapman, hello there. Well, Strapman, we're going to talk about nothing but haunted bookshop. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave all the, uh, the tobacco type questions up to you guys. Uh, well, we'll see how the conversation goes. Paragon Piper, hello. Everett Young's having some haunted bookshop. Good deal, Everett. Thank you, Shade Tree Piper. That's a good point. We got 107 folks on right now, and there's only 18 likes. The more thumbs up you give the stream, the more people find out about it, the more fun we'll have next time. So uh, if, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. MC Cigar 70, M Cigar 77. Good to see you, buddy. Ron Hardcrackers Ward. Hello there. Wired on steroids and sleeping pills. Oh, no. Oh, immune therapy, yeah. Been there, Ron. Feel for you, my friend. Dave Tuttle. Grown to love haunted bookshop and old Joe Krantz. Well, Orlick Dark Strong and a Falcon. Nothing wrong with that. Doing fine, Tony. Doing just fine. Corey Lies having some haunted bookshop in his 320 KS. Jeff Burke, hello. Brando March. Are the Burleys more pronounced in Old Joe Kranz or Haunted Bookshop? Um, I, I think in Haunted Bookshop, just because Old Joe Kranz has some more Virginia in it, but uh, maybe that's a question you can ask, uh, ask Jeremy shortly. Uh, Stratman, I've never actually uh, calculated how long it takes me to smoke a tub of Carter Hall, but I don't smoke a lot of it. You know, usually I'll have one bowl a day, and lately I haven't even been doing that. It lasts a pretty long time. Robert Miller's having some autumn evening. Very nice. Texas Piper, thank you, Ed. I do. I forgot. I have, um, this is actually, uh, I'm not tasting it to find out. I know what it is. I'm trying to remember the name. It's, um, I think it's Founding Fathers Distillery. It's in Grove City, PA. And it is a single cast bourbon that is quite nice. It's um, very smoky and buttery, if that's a thing. I'm, I'm not a... I'm not a distinguished uh, whiskey drinker. I just know 
that I like it. And, you know. Very nice, dude, Rustica. Something worth asking, Mr. Akisemba. Steph's having Eileen Dream in the Green Bent Briar Billiard Molina. That that's a I saw that pipe on Instagram today. That that's a very nice looking pipe. It's very green. Amen, Kevin Williams. Drink what you like, smoke what you like, and like them both. Ain't it the truth, wrote King Piper. I just stumble a bit when I'm trying to describe the flavors because I don't, you know, different. Like, I can talk about pipe tobacco flavors pretty easily, but I don't do the, you know, leathery notes of... Or Simmons or whatever. I just say it tastes like Parique. Northern Fires, hello. All right, we're going to be calling Jeremy in just a few minutes. I told him 8.15, so we'll, we'll wait until then. Portsmouth Piper, that sounds like a darn good evening. I mean, I'm not a lot of Kia guy, so I'd pass on the pirate cake, but I love that Bayou Morning Flake. Everett, we did not need to know that. There you go, Ron H. Yeah, Big Dave, I am working from home. I am indeed. Hi, Tree. How you doing, Tree? Good to see you, buddy. Skip, I, I would imagine if you put your pipe up against Steph's, it wouldn't be green, no matter how green it might have been, because that pipe is very green. <laughs> but I'm sure your pipe is equally charming. Casey Jones having some Morley's Best in a Peterson Army Mount. Full house indeed. Thank you guys. Really appreciate all you guys showing up. We're going to be getting in touch with Jeremy in just a couple minutes. And thank you for the likes. I see we're up to 55 likes. I really appreciate that because it does, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Smoking Joe, just first bowl of a Scudo after work. I'm gonna fire up some cherry bomb and his pear pipe. Tab. Harrison saying hello from Tennessee. Hello there, Tab. Perium, sorry. I don't have my reading glasses on. I should put them on. Sounds good, Road King Piper. Firestone and Robertson Distillery. I'll have to look for that. You're quite welcome, Rob Austin. Thanks for showing up for them. Makes it easier to recruit them. All right, folks. So uh, as you all know, our guest tonight is going to be uh, Jeremy Reeves. Jeremy is the head blender at Cornell and Deal. And I was really quite, uh, quite happy when Jeremy agreed to join us. So let's give him a call and uh, chat with him a bit. Uh-oh. 
I can't answer that. <laughs> That's somebody else calling me. And as always, give me a thumbs up if the video is okay. Oh, it's doing the slow dialing thing. Well, we'll get it. This happens every once in a while. The phone just sort of refuses to dial. Try it again. Well, we'll give him a minute and try again. <laughs> Hello, Jeremy. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us tonight. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, yeah. No. No problem at all. Uh, we got a really nice crowd uh, gathered to uh, to get to know you a bit better. So I'm really looking forward to the to the chat. Um, Great. Great. So the way I normally start these is just I ask, uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I am a bit of a rolling stone. Um, I grew up in a small town in New Mexico. Uh, and when I turned 19, I moved from my little town of oh, about eight or 9,000 permanent residents and three or 4,000 uh, college students revolving every four years or so to the booming metropolis of Chicago uh, to work with a commune uh, that I went to live with, feeding and clothing homeless people. Oh, um, while I was while I was there at, at that community, um, I was assigned a roommate who ended up being uh, a, a lifelong best friend of mine. And uh, after we each left the commune, um, he did a little traveling back towards where he was from in, in Baltimore in that area. And I did a little traveling back in the Southwest, went to Denver. And then we reconvened and moved to Tennessee. And then after that, we moved to Pennsylvania. And then after that, we moved back to Chicago. And then after that, we moved to Portland, Oregon. And uh, then after a few years in Portland, um, I uh, got a job uh, at Smoking Pipes and Customer Service. And me and uh, my Riot at the time moved from Portland, Oregon, down to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And then after I had been here oh, just a couple of days, they told me, hey, we couldn't tell you about it when you were here for an interview, but uh, now you're part of the company and you should know that uh, we are finalizing a merger with Cornell and Beal. And, uh, we think you might have a place there at some point, so just keep that in the back of your mind. And uh, right around a year from my hire date, uh, it was just a little over a year from my, my hire date, uh, I got pulled into a meeting where they offered me a position as, as blender at Cornell and Beal with uh, a bunch of training and things, and by the end of that, it had, uh, I had been 
promoted onward to to head blubber and uh yeah it was a crazy a crazy whirlwind of activity in that that eight or nine months um there's a whole bunch of other things in between there but that's kind of the uh at least the uh Reader's Digest, very condensed version <laughs> of it all. <laughs> okay, no, that's that's great, uh, and and that's that's really interesting. I, I did not realize a lot of that, and you know, the fact that you moved around so much is really cool. Um, so, it was smoking pipes or Cornell and Deal. They they actually were the folks that trained you how to blend. Uh, Cornell and Deal. So I was I was a a customer service uh, rep at Smoking Pipes, and so I handled uh, you know orders and and returns and um, those sorts of things. Previous to working at Smoking Pipes, um, I had worked in a number of other uh, tobacco shops and. Uh, including Yvonne Reese, which is where I, oh. I, I, had, I had dabbled in pipe smoking before I worked at Yvonne Reese, but Yvonne Reese really was the place where uh, pipes, um, pipes really replaced cigars as my, my everyday go-to method of enjoying quality tobacco. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I had, I had, tobacconist experience and I had tobacco knowledge and I had uh, kind of an obsession <laughs> that has continued. Uh, I've been uh, smoking uh, pipes and cigars uh, and enjoying snooze and chewing tobacco and snuff and, and basically all things quality tobacco since a uh, uh, about the year 2001 um, okay. and uh, so uh, when I was working in smoking pipes customer service and then was offered a position as a blender at C&D um, I started traveling to Morganton North Carolina where C&D was located uh, I would be there for two weeks um, just basically learning uh, processes and, and learning how the recipes were cataloged and learning how to, you know, learning techniques and, and quality control and all those kinds of things and just learning what they were doing. Um, and I did that for just shy of six months. Every two weeks I was there and then the other two weeks I would be back here uh, in South Carolina doing customer service kinds of things. Okay. Um, and, and helping to train my replacement in customer service as well. Um, so when I when when that time came to an end and it was time for Cornell and Deal to relocate to South Carolina, then I uh, I took on more of a more of a leadership role with Cornell and Deal and was uh, responsible for organizing the move and then responsible for organizing the setup um, and responsible after that for uh, how, how we made what we made and, and when we made it and all of those kinds of things as well as uh, developing new recipes and sourcing leaf and uh, customer service kinds of things. And after about a year and a half of, uh, of that, it became clear that Cornell and Deal was growing a lot and that handling all of those various spinning plates was just simply uh, impossible for one person to do all of it really well. And so we decided to kind of divvy up portions of my role to uh, to another, another gentleman named Matt Johnson. Um, so I retained quality control Responsibilities and lead sourcing and uh, the the hows and whys of of methodology, 
um, and recipe development and recipe maintenance and and all of those kinds of things, as well as customer service uh, aspects and uh, business relation aspects of of my job. And and he took over the who who is doing things when they're doing them. So between between the two of us, he's got the who and the when, and I've got the how and the why, got it. and with what, <laughs> if, right. if that makes sense. And again, this is all this is all very condensed. There's there's more detail. This. Oh is. sure, sure. So, but, but yeah, that's that's the basic broad strokes. That's interesting, and and I, I guess you know it's something you were passionate about and that passion grew into what sounds like a, a dream job for somebody that's passionate about tobacco. Yeah, well specifically I was very passionate about Cornell and Deal. I was a huge a huge fan of Cornell and Deal um, prior to prior to ever working there, prior uh-huh. to working at smoking pipes, pretty much everything that I smoked was something that Cornell and Deal had produced with very few exceptions. Um, I do enjoy uh, pipe tobaccos from from other manufacturers. I'm a, a real lover of, of Virginia Perique blends and Virginia blends, and uh, you know I I love I love a lot of different tobaccos, but the the vast majority of what comprised my cellar and my daily smoking were things from Cornell and Deal brand and from uh, other brands that they produce, GLPs and Two Friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the opportunity to to work there was, uh, as you say, very much a dream job. And the opportunity to uh, work there in such a way that I actually had a, a say in how the product came across and what materials we were using to build those things, uh, to build those blends was just even more uh, mind-bogglingly awesome to me. Uh, Outside of my experience in uh, tobacco retail and just being a tobacco geek, uh, I also spent a lot of time working in a number of different restaurants and I've been a lifelong uh, lover of lover of cooking and lover of food, and I get that from my mom. Uh, and uh, so, this was an opportunity, basically, to take my restaurant skills and, and my palate and my understanding of tobacco and my understanding of of pipe tobacco products and kind of roll all of that together into uh, a a job that really there's there's no other job I could imagine that would utilize all of those things and 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 hit the things that I love so much across the board so clearly so yeah, yeah. you're you're saying that it's a dream job is is uh, an understatement <laughs> <laughs> oh that that is really cool um, I, I got to ask: Did did you have the opportunity to to meet the Tarlers at any point in your career? Um, I met I met Patty, um, and and I worked closely with Chris. Um, I I unfortunately never got a chance to to meet Craig. Um, I feel in some ways like I got to know a lot about him, and in, in a sense, to know him through just all of the stories that I have heard from Patty um, and from Chris and from Keith Tony and from Ted Connolly, who was the previous head blender that I replaced, um, who had been at, at Cornell and Deal for uh, 20 years and retri- retired at the young age of 79. Wow. Um, and so I, I heard a lot of stories and I had seen uh, what handful of videos there were out there of, of Craig um, and, and having loved so many of the blends that, that he had developed, I, I feel in a lot of ways like I did know him somehow, but I never got to know him in the true sense. Right, right. Yeah, he was, he was a, a special guy. Um, I, I've told the story before and I won't uh, waste time with it now, but I, I had a phone conversation with him back when I was just starting out and he was, you know, they, they were selling uh, Cornell and Deal tobacco by phone. You had to call up to, uh, to order. 
And uh, yes. he changed the whole course of my pipe smoking. You know, he, he turned me on to Burley and uh, spent a lot of time talking to me. And, you know, I'm, I'm forever appreciative of that. And I become a fan because of that that one phone conversation. Uh, yeah, so so he was quite a guy. That's that's everything that I've understood, and and it's those kinds of personal connections. And to me, to be pipe smoking is great, and it's wonderful to taste these things, and it's wonderful to have, uh, you know, to have beautiful pipes and to have uh, special tobaccos that you enjoy. But more than that, to me, what got me into tobacco in the first place was the way that it brought people together. Mm -hmm. And and I never saw such personal connection um, evoked in a brand of, of pipe tobacco as I did from Cornell and Deal. And that was one of the things, in, in every bit as much, I would say, as the flavor profiles that, that they were working with and the, the types of tobaccos and the types of flavor profiles that they thought were interesting that were very different than uh, a lot of European and even a lot of American pipe tobacco brands. But more than that, the personal touch, that things were handmade and that they would spend time with you um, that those were things that were that were intriguing to me about the brand and that that had a lot to do with why they were my favorite then and why they're my favorite now and why I wanted to work at the company and why I I am so glad I still work at the company and those are yeah. things that I try and and uh, keep keep true to in the way that I handle uh, my email inbox and in the way that I handle my phone calls and the way that I that I uh, interact with with pipe smokers at pipe clubs and events and things that the relationships are, are every bit as important to me as the quality of the product yeah that that is that is great to hear because it is there is something about pipes and pipe smoking that just brings people together, and uh, you know that's something we've been talking about a lot here over the over the past year. You know, it's been such a weird year, and uh, you know, so difficult to just stay in touch with people. Yet, because we've got this common interest in in pipe smoking, we've as, as a community been able to kind of bond together over that, and it's helped us get through some some difficult times. So, it, there's something unique about it. I agree. I agree. So I'm I'm curious about it. Last time we talked, you were on your way to uh, to pick out Parik in Louisiana. I, th I think is what you told me. And I'm yeah, and actually, uh, oddly enough, I will I will be uh, heading on another trip to Louisiana for uh, for another round of uh, barrel selecting uh, here in just a, a little over a week. Ah, okay. So is, is that a, a big part of your job, traveling to, to different places to, to, to pick out the leaves? Um, yes, uh, obviously uh, a lot of that has, has been difficult to do this year. Yeah. Um, like, for example, I, uh, my girlfriend and I will be traveling by car to Louisiana because we neither one feel like it's a very responsible thing at this particular moment in time to uh, travel by plane mm -hmm. and uh, be crowded in with so many people in the airport and uh, renting cars and things like that. So we'll be driving to Louisiana. Um, much of the leaf selection process for me at this point uh, can be done um, through phone conversations to to target what what exactly it is I'm looking for, um, and then uh, I receive I receive uh, from whatever tobacco dealer that I'm that I'm working with for whatever component I might be trying to source. They can just select uh, samples of things that they've been able to source either specifically for my requests or things that they think might meet my my needs that they have uh, readily available and um, sometimes it takes more than one round but these days I've got I've got kind of the the relationship and the understanding and the shorthand with uh, the folks that uh, are kind enough to handle our account 
that they know what I'm looking for and they keep me in mind when they're buying leads. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's 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 not something you can really do uh, by Zoom or something like that very easily. <laughs> no, um, I mean you know, I guess by Zoom to some degree you might be able to assess visual quality, uh, but there's so much more to tobacco than just how it looks and whether or not it's pretty. Um, and and yeah, that would that would be difficult to do uh, without having product in hand. Um, I do, I do live relatively close to Wilson, North Carolina, which is uh, basically the, the tobacco uh, hub in, in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're about two hours and 45 minutes away from Wilson and basically every every large dealer as well as many small dealers and auction houses and a lot a lot a lot of farmers um, are all located right in that area and so for anything to do with uh, Burley selection or with uh, Virginia selection it's it's pretty easy for me to go and visit um, if if uh, that seems like a a good thing to do. But these days it's been much more done over the phone and and getting stuff in the mail and and smoking and blending with it and seeing what works and what doesn't. And then if we need to reassess and look at other things, we can. But like I said, usually these days I've got, I've got a lot of really great people who, who work in tobacco all over the world and who keep me in mind as they see things that would work for what we need. That's great. That's really cool. So, um, what do, what do you like to do when you're not uh, blending or smoking or finding tobacco? <laughs> um, I really love to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, recently for for Christmas, my my lovely girlfriend Hillary got me a uh, a wood fired oven. Um, when I was in Portland, uh, I was working at a, at a wood-fired pizza place called Pyro Pizza, mm. and uh, it was so it was so much fun. And to this day, it's still the best pizza I've ever had. Um, and you know, I've, I've traveled all over. I've been a lot of places. I've eaten food in all of those places, and food is, is one of the main ways that I make memories with folks. Mm-hmm. Um, and make memories of places, but that that place uh, really changed the game for me, and it essentially ruined uh, all other pizza <laughs> for me. Um, and so uh, she got me a really really cool wood fired oven um, that we've been enjoying using, and uh, so that's something that I've that we've spent some time doing uh, when I'm not sourcing leaf and smoking pipes and blending tobacco and things like that. Right. Uh, I really, I really enjoy uh, keeping up with current events. Um, I am a, a big fan of basically anything that is that is made with craft and care, and uh, that translates over into pipes and cigars and clothing and uh, boots and and all kinds of things and I'm, I'm a bit of a collector as well of everything that I'm really into <laughs> so uh, yeah those are those are all things that are that are hobbies for me supporting small makers and uh, supporting supporting people who are do th- doing things in a quality way for 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 not only passion, but for reasons of sustainability and reasons of fair trade um, to to workers and those kinds of things, those are all really important things to me. Uh, that that is great. Uh, I mean, the that whole sustainability and you know craft is is so important. It seems like every year we get further and further away from that, and more and more into into disposable things. You know phones that used to last 10 years last one year now and cars aren't you can't even repair them half the time so yeah right i really appreciate that 
you're talking about uh, phones that used to last 10 years, but even even a 10 year old phone, like can, you know the uh, the old plastic phone that was hanging on my grandparents' wall had to have been there for 40 years. That's yeah. <laughs> you know, so even right. even a phone that lasts 10 years is is you know that's you're you're talking about baby steps that we've that we've taken towards less and less sustainability and now it's just like by the time you buy a computer it's obsolete by the time you buy a phone it's obsolete uh it's it's really it's really kind of insane on the one hand the level of uh of knowledge and understanding and intelligence that we've been able to to accumulate but it's also really sad and kind of scary how quickly things get disposed of and how quickly things are, things become garbage. Right. And yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No. So, soapbox, soapbox dismounted. Uh, it's, it's a good one to get on. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask you one more question about Cornell and Deal because it's something I've always been curious about and then we're going to sure. switch over to uh, questions from the from the crowd here. Uh, I'm just curious with you know with it being it it seems to me at least that you're still a relatively um, how can I put this a, a small blender compared to some of the the the, the other guys out there. Um, yeah, that's absolutely true. And you've got you've got a vast catalog. I mean, you've got a, an enormous number of blends. And I'm just wondering, is is it a challenge to like figure out where the, where the market's going and what which blends you need to stock up on and which blends you need to cut back on? And you know, how how do you do that? Well, so one of the things that was a a change in business structure. Um, at the time that uh, Cornell and Deal merged into Low DC Enterprises, was as as we talked about before. Previously, Cornell and Deal was a manufacturer, a wholesaler, uh, and a retailer, and and an exporter, mm-hmm. and. Um, in the same ways that I feel like uh, at the beginning of my time at Cornell and Deal, that all of the things that I was responsible for were basically limiting me in being very good at any of them. Thus, I, I needed to be able to split some of those responsibilities with another person so that I could be more specialized in things that really I was best at and that someone else could could have the opportunity to be specialized in things that they were good at. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think that Cornell and Deal had that same sort of issue that they were, they were wearing so many hats uh, that it was difficult to put an outfit together. Mm. Um, and and I say that with the utmost respect. I'm, I'm, they they were a small business doing what they needed to do to be able to be the kind of business they wanted to be. Um, but so one of the things that uh, Laudisi changed for Cornell and Deal was we got to just be manufacturers, and uh-huh. we we got to pass off the the wholesaling to uh, to our in-house distributor, La DC Distribution Group, and we uh, we forwent the retail entirely and allowed our retailers that we partnered with to to stand in that gap and be retailers on on our behalf and to to represent our brand that way um, and. That was a that was one of many huge game changers for Cornell and Deal's opportunities and for Cornell and Deal's ability uh, to to function really well um, to streamline and just be able to focus on manufacturing. So what that means is that the distributor has their stock, their inventory. And as 
a particular blend gets down to a certain threshold of quantity on the shelf, then they place an order to stock the shelf back up. And that is what drives our, our production. Oh, okay. Okay. So the way that we the way that we decide what to make and when to make it is based on sales data driven by our distribution um, or by our our own exporting that we do, um, and so that that is what drives our production. Got it. Okay, that's that's very interesting. All right. Well, if if it's okay with you, we'll see if there's any questions in the in the chat. Um, Absolutely. There's about a thirty second delay, so guys, if you uh, if you have questions, please put them in the chat now, and I'll see if any have come in. So uh, Stratman is asking Jeremy, how would you add more body or strength? Up, oh, it scrolled off the screen. <laughs> So we're getting a lot of questions. That's good. How, how would you add more body strength or strength to a blend without changing the flavor? Um, one of my favorite uh, materials to work with for that very purpose is dark burly because dark burly doesn't have a terribly overt flavor on its own, um, but it has a lot of depth and a lot of strength. Um, and so with a small amount of dark burly added to a blend, you can give a deeper and more impactful impression uh, to the overall flavor without, without really changing the flavor profile. You're just adding some depth. And as far as strength, you'll notice a significant uptake in nicotine, even if you only add uh, one or 2% of dark burley. So that's not nearly enough to really dramatically tip the needle in terms of flavor change, but that's certainly enough to make an, a difference in the overall way that the tobacco feels on your palate and the nicotine impact that, that it has for you. Got it. Okay. Very interesting. Um, the one simplex one, Tim is asking if you I'm sorry that this is scrolling so quickly. I need to. Uh, sure. Do, do you remember Brother Chuck from Ewan Reese? Yes, absolutely. So the okay, there we go. Uh, we we've got some characters in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> Joe R D Z once is saying he's got a fever, and the only remedy is more sun bear. We need more sun bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, there will be more coming this year. I, I think you'll be pleased. Uh, so, but it's it's a it's a warm weather release. Um, ah. So not not till uh, later this summer. But there there will be more sun bear. Rest assured. That's great news. Uh, Tony five thirteen wants to know if Cornell and Deal will be looking to hire any official taste testers. Uh, <laughs> And let's see. And Go ahead. At this point, I don't think we have any plans uh, for that particular position or title. Uh, <laughs> we did just hire a uh, we did just hire a new person who is uh, helping out right now as as uh, a assistant blender. Um, basically uh, a, a person who can go and get materials that that are too blenders who are who are production blenders need um, and kind of help streamline their their processes and, and work essentially as an expediter oh, sure. um, so at this point I don't foresee any other hiring on on Cornell and Deal's docket in the in the near future anyway right well if, if that job comes up tell me first and then I'll let Tony know uh, <laughs> So let's see. Paragon Piper is asking, "What? This is a good question, actually. What inspired you to choose uh, Lovecraft for the Tobacco series, and what do you love about Caterini?" Oh, um, so the the inspiration for Lovecraft is that uh, I am a huge fan uh, of of 
anything that is morose or horror related um i i love scary movies i love i love scary stories um and and i find our obsession with fear really fascinating including my own obsession with fear uh i really love hp lovecraft because he he had such a wild imagination and with very little actual information about what was fearsome he created truly fearsome stories right. um, and and i thought i thought that his his storytelling was just exquisite uh the first time that i read him and so uh matt johnson who i mentioned earlier who is our our production manager um he and i share a love of hp lovecraft and we thought that this would be a really cool thing to put together uh some blends that were perhaps a little strange um and that worked with unique components and that worked with unique flavor profiles and that were that were odd and strange and savory um and to try and evoke some of the essence of the same sorts of things that we experienced in lovecraft's writing uh-huh. uh, and so that was the inspiration for the lovecraft series uh each of the blends are named for uh lovecraft stories um mad fiddler flake is named for the music of eric zahn which is a, a truly fantastic story about a man who, uh, due to visions of things that no one else in the town that he lives in can see, is uh, essentially possessed and and driven to play otherworldly wild violin music by the visions of these things that he sees that no one else in his town can see. Um, so that was, that was a blend that, uh, that was directly inspired by, directly inspired by that story. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to try and create something that was, that was sweet, uh, but in a strange sort of way and in a, in a challenging sort of way. And that was, uh, deep and complex and, and winding as you smoked it, the way that that story unwinds and the, the end the end of the story is just shadows the end of the story is there's no clarity as to what exactly has happened and that that not knowing was the scariest thing i may have ever read uh uh, at the time that i read it and uh and so that was something that stuck with me uh you know uh, innsmouth uh obviously a a, a town that that appears in lovecraft's writings quite a bit um Dreams of Cadiz, uh, you know, each of each of these are Lovecraft references, Lovecraft mm-hmm. story references, and and the blends were were developed to be in some way evocative of our personal feelings about the stories. Got it. That that's really cool. Uh, and then Caterini. Oh yeah. Caterini is uh, a a specific varietal of Oriental comes from uh from greece and it has a really really delightful sort of spiced apple cider kind of flavor to it Mm. um clovey and and all spicy um and a and a tang that is not dissimilar to to the tanginess of fresh pressed apple cider um is a i think it's a really really unique uh blending component and it is exceedingly difficult to come by these days and we gratefully have a a fairly large supply of it that has been uh bale aging since 2006. so um so we use it we use it sparingly so that we can keep that stock going for some time but that's that's kind of the flavor profile that that Caterini has and, and why we use it in, in some of the blends that we do. Um, it has a really unique oriental uh, flavor flavor profile. Yes. 
Right. Great. Great. Um, okay. Uh, next question is from Ocho Ita. He's asking, what is the first recipe that you developed for C&D and the one that you're most proud of? Uh, well, those are definitely going to be two separate. <laughs> 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 uh, the the first recipe that I developed for Cornell and Deal um, was Kaviki, which was uh, we we had the idea to create a series of, of blends that uh, paid some sort of homage to uh, Italian pipe makers. Uh, both Craig and, and Chris Tarler were big fans of many of the Italian makers, and so uh, we we did uh, Radice, we did uh, Kaviki, we did. I'm not sure to paha. I can't. I can't even remember the entire the entire series now. But uh -huh. nonetheless, Kaviki was the first blend that I developed for Cornell and Deal, um, and it was a burly blend, um, heavy on the dark burly, uh, with with a little bit of white burly, some red Virginia, uh, some black Cavendish, a very small amount of dark fired. And uh, my first stab at using chocolate and port together in a in a flavoring. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, there are some things that I would have done differently in basically every aspect of the ways that I used those, those components. Um, I would have changed proportions um, uh, in in basically everything. But all of those components are things that I, I still really love to work with together. Um, and I still really love the, the combination of port and chocolate. I just, I did not have my chops down as far as how to use uh, those flavorings and in what combination to use them. Right. Uh, the blend, aside from my first blend, where it was a bunch of things that, uh, in hindsight, were lessons learned, um, despite the fact that I will throw this out there, I have some old tens of Kaviki that I will say have really, really been done done good with some years in a ten. Um, hmm. They've they've come into they've come into their own in a way uh, that has has been delightful, but. Um, Nonetheless, I digress. Uh, the blend that I am most proud of, but it's I, probably Sun Bear. Oh, ah, um, okay. Of of all of the blends that I have that I have been able to develop for for our company, um, you know, and I. I put a lot of effort and I, I put a whole lot of effort into sourcing the components that we use. And I put a lot of effort into getting the, fl the flavor profiles that I want and, and understanding, understanding how to use these components and what quantities I need to think about to get this or that effect, um, this or that mouthfeel, this or that, uh, specific flavor note to come through or to, or to drift into the background. Um, and those are all things that just come from doing it, doing it. But Sunbear, my girlfriend and I keep these, and this was the first time that something outside of outside of my work life that I was also passionate about became a part of the blend to be able to incorporate honey from our own bees um, in into that recipe. Um, and to find a way to 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 find a way to bolster that flavor and to use that flavor to bolster the flavor of tobacco of the tobaccos used and and to find that balancing act between the casing and and the flavor of the tobacco as that is the most personally involved I've ever been with a tobacco wow that's that's a really I didn't realize that uh you were using honey from your own bees. That that is really cool. Um, so we got we got 
Two similar questions here, one from Texas Piper and another from Glenn Dunnington. What, what is the hardest blend you make? The hardest blend we make? Yeah, what's the one that's hardest to get right, I guess? Well, I mean, I'm I'm not sure how to how to answer that because if if we've got the tobaccos that we need to to make our recipes and if we're following the recipes as they as they are in our software which the way the software is written you basically have to um, the guesswork of producing is kind of taken out I think the things that are hardest to get for a blender uh, are the the hand memory for how moist is too moist and how moist is not moist enough um, and there are tools there are electronic tools that you can use to uh, to get an idea of, of general moisture content of tobacco mm -hmm. but those things are fallible um, every bit as, as a human is fallible and so we tend to rely more on our hands than we do on the elect the electronic tool um, and that's one of the skills that really really is important for a blender is being able to assess moisture um, and how moist is too moist and how moist is not moist enough for the particular leaf or combination of leaves that you're working with um, but as far as as far as getting the blend right um, that work is all it, that work is all done the recipe is the recipe is written uh, the leaf that we need to produce the recipe is established and and so that that is work that I do as head blender in sourcing the tobaccos that we need to produce the blends that we require them for if that makes sense yeah definitely so so for the production blenders it's a matter of putting in the number of pounds that they need you know telling telling the system the number of pounds that they need to make of item x and then it tells them okay so starting out you need so many so many pounds so many ounces so many fractions of an ounce of this leaf followed by the next the next smallest thing in in the blend and it works from the largest uh the the most base uh component in a blend to the most fine or smallest component in a blend and you build it that way on the table and then you you use your hands and you blend those things together until you get a consistent uh array of colors from the different components that you've used until it's it's well mixed and well integrated um so yeah. that part is physically demanding um, but as far as following the recipe, it's, it's, it's written there for you. Got it. Um, we're, we're actually a little bit past nine. Can you hang on for just two more questions? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, the first one is regarding Siri and Latakia. Do you, do you think that's ever coming back? I don't, um, yeah. sadly, uh, Syria has Syria has really been devastated um, for for a long time, um, and and the devastation and the decimation of farmlands and of of, of equitable jobs in agriculture. Um, are such that growing anything in, in Syria, I think, is, is difficult. Um, growing, growing tobacco, um, all the more so. And uh, the government made the bush that, it, that was used to fire cure 
uh, the Latakia illegal to to harvest, uh, um, and so it would it would take it would take a lot of different factors, um, political, economic, and legal, all changing for Syrian Latakia to come back. Right. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, the, the last question. So, so Haunted Bookshop is a pretty popular tobacco here in the YouTube pipe community. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of folks smoke that. And this question comes up quite often. Uh, is there any difference between the tinned version of Haunted Bookshop and the bulk version? There's not. In fact, if we, you know, I mentioned before that uh, our our purchase order from our distributor is what drives what we make. Mm -hmm. So they need so many two ounce tens of haunted bookshop. They need so many eight ounce tens of haunted bookshop. They need so many pounds in bulk of haunted bookshop. That's all blended at the same time. Okay. Uh, there is no, there is no qualitative difference. Uh, in you know tobaccos that are used in in a blend for one size category versus another, it's it is the same it is the same blend and it is it is probably produced at the exact same time. There are instances where we've got haunted bookshop in two ounce on on our purchase order, uh, but we don't necessarily need any in bulk right now. But in mm -hmm. any time where haunted bookshop is is produced it is produced by the exact same recipe using the, the exact same components and very very often that same batch will go into some in two ounce some in eight ounce and some in one pound bags that's true of any of our products that that come in different size quantities got it well that that answers the uh, the mystery so i appreciate that <laughs> Well, Jeremy, this is this has been really fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I've really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, thank and, you. You know, I can tell by the number of questions we got that the, the folks enjoyed it. Uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, early next year you'd be willing to come back again. I'm sure that there would be a, a lot of interest in uh, in chatting with you further. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to do that anytime, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. Absolutely. Well, you have a good evening, and uh, we'll we'll chat again soon. Sounds good. All right. Goodbye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Thanks. Bye. Well, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't get all those questions. They were going by so fast. And, uh, you know, I tried to pick out the ones that I thought would be of most general interest. But uh, that was that was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed uh, talking to Jeremy. I hope you enjoyed the conversation getting to know him a bit better. Uh, it's a very interesting guy. And, uh, you know, clearly, clearly knows his tobacco in the industry, but uh, there's more to it than that. And uh, I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to, uh, to dig into it a bit more. Yes, Corey lies, I, I think so. Fantastic. I'm seeing a lot of people saying thanks. And I, I, I appreciate you guys showing up. This was, this was a great crowd. You know, we hit, uh, we hit 130 at one point. So very, very nice. Uh, Larry Laporo and Daniel Tobias. Hello. Didn't see you guys earlier. The Tamper Tantrum as well. And Skip Miller. Wow. <laughs> a lot of good, a lot of folks came in after the end. Well, I couldn't possibly have read off 130 names anyway. <laughs> So we'll stick around till 9.30 uh, and chat, but uh, just before people drop off, remember next Friday, same time, we're going to be having our Virtual Pipe Club. And the week after that, we've got uh, David Dorian Ross of the Virtual Pipe Club. So that, that'll, be a, that'll be a fun interview as well. And guys, that's it. I, I don't have anybody booked after that. So if any of you would like to, uh, like to join me for a chat like we just had with Jeremy, I promise I won't uh, rake you over the coals too much. Get in touch. Uh, canerodpiper at gmail.com. Love to have you on.
This bourbon, by the way, is, uh, I just opened the bottle before this, so uh, I forgot to buy beer. So <laughs> that's why I'm having bourbon tonight. It's, it's really very nice. It's, I think it's, for some reason, I don't think it's Founding Fathers. I think it's something else, but the word father is definitely there. And it's from Grove City, PA. Portsmouth Piper, please do. You send me an email. I'd love to have you, buddy. And it shot by already, but I saw somebody recommend Public Piper. I will try to get in touch with him. I, I don't know him, and uh, I, I don't actually know if he'd be interested, but I'll, I'll definitely give it a shot. No, Tony, it's not not your father's root beer. <laughs> Shane Ireland could be could be interesting as well, yeah. All right, volunteer Piper, thanks for joining us. You have a great weekend. All briared up. Take care, my friend. Ah, so this has been a it's been a quick week. You know, it's funny how this is my first full week back uh, to work since vacation, and it's funny how uh, quickly the week went by. Uh, I guess you just you get used to sort of a relaxed vacation mode, and then all of a sudden it's you know nine to five again, and it just shot by. All right, Bona Piper, sometime in April sounds good. Um, let If you can, pick a date and we'll, we'll put you on the calendar. Well, Surly Swede, we'll... Uh, <laughs> you can use an assumed name if you want, and we don't have to disclose your location, so you might be able to do it. Dude, rustic. I don't need the ingredients. I I have so much of it. I I'm I'm set. If they ever stop making it, you can get in touch with me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ochoita. I appreciate that. Yeah, B. Conrad Sarge is is very difficult to get in touch with. Forefathers. Thank you, Artie. Yes, it's Forefathers in Grove City, PA. There you go. Philadelphia Piper got it as well. Thank you, guys. That, that's exactly right. Oh, Kevin, you had a busy week, too? Yes, Desert Pine Piper, that's exactly what it is. Forefathers Heritage Bourbon. It's an, a special anniversary edition single cask, and uh, it's quite good if you get a chance. Dave, Simon can't do Friday nights. Uh, I, I thought about him as well, and I was hoping to maybe get him for a, I was thinking maybe 4th of July, because that fell on a Friday, I think. And I was going to do like a pre-recorded thing with him, but it, it just didn't work out. Oh, John David Cole. Yeah, I could, I could see if uh, he'd be interested. Kilted Piper, Steve, I would love to do that. Steve's suggesting some of the lady pipe smokers. Uh, I saw Sue Dunhill pop in while I was talking to Jeremy. I don't know if Sue's still there, but uh, Friday night, turn, I asked her, and it turns out Friday night is her date night, so she, she doesn't want to commit to it. Um, if, if you got other suggestions for lady pipe smokers, I'd, I'd be happy to, uh, to, to try to get them to come on. Yes, Kevin, I've, I've got John David Cole on the list. I'll get in touch with him and see if he'd be interested. Full Smoking Bar, how you doing, Nick? Takio would be interesting. Is Takio out there? 
I'd be happy to chat with Takuya. Ah, yes, thank you, Texas Piper. I, I forgot all about those two. Uh, Duza Pipes and Skook with the Uke would both be great, uh, great guests. I'll, I'll see what I can do there. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Christian. Glad you like it. I uh, <laughs> I really had a lot of fun doing that. So, backcountry pipe. I've got Doug Owen on the list. He's been it's it's been difficult to schedule him with everything that's going on in his neck of the woods these days, and the holiday season was really bad for him. But we're talking about maybe sometime in the spring. So he is on the list. Kathy from Cup of Joe's. I don't know Kathy from Cup of Joe's, David, but. I'll, I'll see what I can find out about that. Ed, you're going to have to take that up with Sue. Yes, Ed, I saw I saw that Texas Piper. I saw it on uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that Leaf by Oscar Sumatra. That's a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, cigar. Ah, uh, Tamper Tantrum. That's a good suggestion, too. Bremen Pipe Smoker. Um, we got the issue there with the time difference, but heck, if Daniel Tobias could stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Daniel, I am open for business, but I've got a waiting list. So if you got something you want done, send me an email, and I'll, I'll explain that to you. Run Hardcrackers Ward, I have not. Um, yeah, those both would be great choices. Tim, if Smoking Cardboard wants to come on, I'll, I'll, I'll check with him next time, I, next time I talk to him. That would be great. Book Lover Piper, I'm, I, I'll have to check into that couch. Look, you guys are mentioning a lot of folks that are on YouTube now, and I I rely on folks getting in touch with me. Maybe that's foolish on my part, but if if there's somebody that you really want to see come on here, like I'm seeing somebody rec uh, recommending uh, Boca de Boyton, get in touch with them and say, hey, you know, do this. We'd like to see it because I can't I can't go hunting all these folks down. Um, Patrick Grant Silver would be a good choice. Uh, Katie Snow, yeah, Queen of Cobbs. I remember her. I, I, I haven't seen her in a long time. Bear Jensen, yes. No, Tony, it's been kind of uh, safe out in the yard lately. There, there hasn't been any more of those those bomber tree limbs coming down uh, that was that was amazing that tree limb if you guys didn't see the the video the darn thing was about that big in diameter you know probably about uh i don't know three or four inches in diameter and it just went into the ground about that deep uh it it fell from probably about 40 or 50 feet it's a big old oak tree and man, I, I'm just so lucky that, well, lucky it didn't hit the house, lucky it didn't hit the car, lucky it didn't land on one of the dogs or on me or my wife. Here, Jensen again, dude, Rustica, okay. B. Conrad, Mrs. Canerod will not do it. Um, I'll ask her again, but she will not do it. Yeah, thank you, Tamper Tantrum. Do talk to Harriet. I'd love to have her on. All right, Philadelphia Piper, good luck with those pork loins. Uh, God bless. Have a great weekend, my friend. <laughs> Strap man wants to watch me do online shopping. <laughs> Tim, 
Tim, I, I'd love to have you on. It's this is not about being popular or anything like that. It's about being a pipe smoker, you know. I mean, when I was talking to Jeremy, I you know naturally it it, it we talked about Cornell and Deal because you know that's the reason we got together. But I tried to talk about other things. You know, I tried to talk about his hobbies. I tried to talk about travel, and we did because that's what's interesting. You know, it's it's not just about, you know, the fact that you're a famous pipe smoker on YouTube or something. So get in touch. I'd, I'd love to have you. Christian, you're going to you're going to take care of getting in touch with Pear. Leswood would be great, Dick. I'd be happy to have him. All right, Sailor, you take care. Have a good evening and great weekend. Ah, that's a good question, Texas Piper. I like a lot of C&D stuff. Uh, yeah, Crooner's very good. Um, I like, um, what's the other beer tongue? Gentleman Caller. Uh, they're... Uh, Poplar Camp is an extremely good vapor that I just found out about last year. Uh, they make so much good stuff, and if you extend it out to the GLPs blends, I mean, there's just there's just so much. Um, Pegasus, Old Joe Krantz, uh, I, the, the, I, I could spend the whole night listing Cornell and Deal and, and Great Peas blends that I like. Yes, Michael Case, we do have a visit from the Arborist in our future. Vid Mays, good night. Have a good weekend, my friend. Thank you, JMZ. You take care and have a good weekend. Shandy Gap's a good one in Sea Harley Ride. Uh, Shandy Gap's quite good. I, I don't smoke it much. Uh, I've got some cellared that I should probably pull out. Oh, Ron H., that is a fantastic blend. Miskatonic mixture is really fantastic. Um, I think that's another one that uh, uses the Caterini. Yeah, that is the problem, uh, Bona Piper. The, the time zone difference is an issue. Rob Sherritt, Lurker, Lurker's Rule. <laughs> Have a good night, Rob, and have a great weekend. Daniel, you take care. Have a great weekend, buddy. Ah, Kilted Piper. Steve's got a name for a shop. Woodland Pipe and Wood Shop. Very nice, Steve. Oh, Pope oh, Piper, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Depends on what the tobaccos are. All right, Parsimonious Piper. Thank you, buddy. You have a good weekend. Shade Tree Piper, good night, Paul. It's my pleasure. You, you have a great weekend, buddy. One Simplex One, have a good good weekend. Yeah, Ron H., I, I do like Perique, and that Caterini is just so good in that Miskatonic mixture. Yeah, all the Greg Pease blends are great. I mean, I'm not a lot of Kia fan. He he does some fantastic stuff with a lot of Kia, but, it, but some of his other stuff is good, too. I love Union Square. You probably get tired of me saying that, but I'm not an English smoker, but that changed my whole opinion of English. <laughs> Voodoo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I toyed with the idea of having a dirty martini tonight, and I was going to call you out uh, when I showed it. But martinis don't. Uh, martinis have to be drunk fairly quickly before they cool off, in my opinion. 
before they warm up, I guess I should say. So just going with the bourbon. Your dad thought Pegasus stinks? Is your is your dad a smoker ever? Corvette Jim, you have a good night, my friend, and a great weekend. Portsmouth Piper, we're talking about Greg Pease. They they are. Boy, he'd be a great guy to talk to, but he he's a bit uh it reclusive, I think. Yep, Maltese Falcon, Nick. Definitely a good blend. That's one of the uh, the few Latakia blends that I would put in a. You know, I, I I want to have some of that in my in my cellar before I retire. Probably not a lot, but a couple of tins. Night Piper on the 45. Thank you for joining us and have a great weekend. Piping 304. Yeah, Fashion will be late. It's, it's a bit beyond that, but that's okay. <laughs> You know what, guys? Uh, I will try to get in touch with Greg Pease. He's hard to get in touch with. Um, I, and and I'm, I'm basing this on an experience I had years ago. I, I shouldn't label the guy as being reclusive, but um, I was on a forum and he sent me a private message. And I'm not going to go into why. And I tried to respond to it. And it was this account does not allow private messages and I think I've tried to contact him on Instagram once and it was a similar thing yeah the Maltese Falcon if you if you like a lot of Kia blends um, I mean the two that I I the two lot of Kia, well the three lot of Kia blends that I want to have in my cellar before I retire one is Maltese Falcon the other is Star of the East, and the third is um, Larry's Blend, which is one of uh, Russellette's blends, and another guy that we could we could talk to. Um, the combination, the, 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 those three are, are the ones that I really can still enjoy occasionally. So if I if I get two two can two tins of each, I'll be happy. That is a good evening, Michael Case. <laughs> shandy Gaff and a Shandy Gaff. All right, Tony, you have a great weekend too, my friend. Enjoy that bologna sandwich. Timber Drifter, thank you much. You take care and have a great weekend. Ron H., I, I have a, a good friend that uh, knows Boswell, and I'm going to try to work something there. Uh, but you're right. Uh, he's, 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 he doesn't like that sort of thing. Chris Kahn, thank you. Have a great night. Kathy Ennis, fantastic. You, you have a good night and a good weekend. Ryan K., I have not smoked it yet. I will. <laughs> That's funny, Everett. Well, Donald T., like I said, I don't want to paint Greg Pease uh, based on that one interaction I had. So I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get in touch with him. Pipe Tree, thank you, my friend. You have a great evening and, and a good weekend. Great morning, I should say, huh? Ernie from Watch City.
Good thoughts, Skip. Robert Miller, thank you so much for joining us, my friend. You have a great weekend, too. Ah, Voodoo 07, anyone in the Milwaukee area, they have a really good pipe club meetup every Sunday. Uh, but if you, if you go to Voodoo 07's pipe meetup, you got to bring Yingling. He, he loves the stuff. My pleasure, Donald T. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, Michael Case, thank you for joining us, my friend. You know, folks, I, I got to say, we, we had we had 130 people tonight and I'm humbled by that, and I know the vast majority of those folks showed up to hear Jeremy. But here I am at a minute past 9.30 when I usually stop, and there's still 55 people on. And granted, a lot of you guys are just saying goodnight, but I, I so appreciate you folks. I really do. You know, the, the fact that you're willing to take this time out of your Friday and, uh, and join me and uh, let me have a pipe with friends, it, it's really... I say it every week, and I mean it. It's the high point of my week. Voodoo, you watch the Packer games. That sounds awful. What do you do for fun? Armchair Piper, have a great night, Ed, and a good weekend. Ah, Ron Hardcracker's Ward. Shiner Bach makes a seasonal beer called Schmores, Schmores, S'mores, that tastes much like Yingling Hershey chocolate. I'll have to look for that. I enjoyed that Yingling Hershey chocolate. Although I gotta say, it's probably not something I want to drink a lot of. Amen to that strap, man. And I'm I'm trying. I, I hope it's uh, I hope it's converting to folks uh, joining us. Yeah, we got quite a few likes, Jeff Burke, and I appreciate that. Guys, if you haven't hit the thumbs up on your way out, please do. Um, it's uh, It helps. You know, it helps with the algorithm. It helps people find this channel. And uh, that's, you know, we're, we're here to build community. That's what I want to do. Guilty Piper Steve, you, you mean Wednesday? <laughs> that was a rough day. Wednesday was a very rough day. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. We come here to get away from that. And, you know, I did mean what I said to Jeremy. You know, this this group has come together over the past year, and it's given us a a place to get away from the turmoil of the world. And uh, I see folks saying they're grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. I, you know, I'm, I benefit from this more than you do, believe me. Three different flavors of beer in one six pack. Ron Hardcracker's word. That sounds like a a deal I can't uh, can't miss. <laughs> Thank you, Monty. It is a wonderful way to kick off the weekend. Well, folks, my uh, my glass is empty, and I've kept you quite a bit beyond the uh, the normal time. So thank you much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Please tune in next week uh, when it's going to be the Virtual Pipe Club and uh, we'll, we'll just continue to have some fun. So you all have a great weekend. 
and uh, I'll see you on Sunday morning, I hope. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things go this weekend, but I should should do a video on Sunday morning, and uh, we'll, we'll check in after that. All right, guys. Thank you much. Y'all take care, and we'll talk soon.